Hey all, welcome back. And this is nested loops, part one. And this will be the last lesson in the side of the loops unit. So a nested loop kind of relates to nested structures, but not always. A nested loop is essentially a loop that you put inside of another loop. And it allows us to do things like iterate over an array of arrays, uh, look at all of the properties inside objects which are located inside of arrays, and, and lots of other things too. So we're going to walk through a couple of gentle examples without loops first, just to get an idea of what these would look like. So using the console or REPL.IT, write a series of console.log statements that will log the numbers uh, in ascending order small to large. Or in ascending small to large order. So here's our nested array. And we're going to say console.log nested array. I'm going to copy this because I'm going to write it a bunch. So for the first one, Let's have a look at nested array at zero. The idea there is that I want to just see what's at index zero for the nested array. So the entire array here is the nested array at zero, which means if we recall from that section where we worked on this, if I wanted to say at zero, it's going to give me the first one. And then from here, I could copy this, paste it a couple of times, change this to one, this to two, and that's going to log one, two, three. So from this point, things become relatively straightforward. To move to the next array inside of our nested array, we'll go with one, and the same thing. We'll have one at zero, one at one, one at two, and that'll be the next three. And then we're gonna go two at zero, two at one, and two at two. And that's it. So sweet. So you want to figure that you could picture what's happening here is that let's say we had two variables, i and j. So we could say if i is equal to 0, or while i is equal to 0, or for i is equal to 0, uh, j is going to be equal to um, all of the values in the inner array. So while i is 0, we have uh, you know j is equal to 0, then 1, then 2, then the, this loop ends and another loop starts, and you can see that we have the same inner loop running each time. So 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, all while the outer loop goes 0 while the first loop runs, 1 while the second inner loop runs, and then 2 while the third inner loop runs. So we haven't gotten to the idea of a nested loop yet, but you might be able to see how the pattern would be established. So let's talk about an object that has objects inside of it. And... Mm, yeah, let's just do it like that. So nested object at inner one. Come on now. And then at inner one at a. So if I console dot log this. Well, first things first, let's get inner at one. We just want to have a look at what's located at the at the first key. So a1, B2, C3. So the first thing we're going to do is grab whatever the value is at A because that'll be this one value. Now that we have that established, we'll move to the next property in this object, which is going to be at B. And we can probably also fill in the third one, which is going to be at C. So if we run this, we now have 1, 2, 3. So from here, the only things that we're going to change, we can actually highlight all of this, the only thing we're going to change is this inner Rather than inner one, we want inner two. But it's still gonna log over. Oh no, it's not. We're gonna we're gonna change to the to the new keys. So D, E, and F, because that'll allow us to log these values. Now as I'm going through this, I'm starting to think that the utility of this is kind of overrated. But it is something that somebody suggested that I put into the course, and it was more of like a hey, you should definitely do this, so we're doing it. And there's probably some utility. So let's run it. And that's how we would log all of the values. So we log each property inside of the inner uh, key, then all of the properties inside of inner two, and then inner three. And that'll allow us to have iterated, <coughs> excuse me, over all of the nested objects. And again, we didn't really iterate so much as we did uh, hard code individual examples of what an iteration would look like, but we're approaching these loops in this fashion. So now we have an array of objects. 
So if we have an array of objects, the first thing we probably want to do is console.log array of objects at zero. And we'll just see what that looks like. So we'll notice that it's going to be that same array, or that same object here. So what we want is this object at A, and then this object at B, and then this object at C. And by this object, we mean array, at ob array of objects at zero, because that's the element located at index zero. It is actually an array. So we could say at A. Now, we could also definitely say dot A, just in case you were curious if it's like, oh, can I say dot A? It's like, yeah, you can. Um, so if we keep this in mind, for the second one, we'll do one, because we're looking at the object that's in position one. And this one's going to be D, E, and F. And let's just follow through with the next one. Array of objects. Now we want the array, uh, or sorry, we want the object that's located in index two. So we'll change that to that. And we want G, H, and I. Cool. And for the last one for now, we're going to have an object which has array values. So the first thing that we'll do, write a console.log statement for object of arrays at inner one. Let's see what that gives us. That should give us this array one, two, three. So if we have that, this is going to give us the element at index zero of the nested array. And we can follow through by putting the index for one and two, log those, make sure we have one, two, three. And from here, it's a simple process of repeating this, but changing this to inner two, uh, Sorry, inner two, and the indexes stay the same because this will be at index zero of this array, index one of this array, and index two, and that's being accessed by inner two object of arrays at inner two. And then if we change this to three, that'll give us the last set of values that we want because we're still accessing arrays that are going to be zero, one, two, or they're indexed at zero, one, two. Okay, so that's it. So you might have thought, wow, that's really annoying, and Good, because what we're about to do is we're going to write a series of for loops and nested loops and for in loops and all that good stuff so that we can, rather than having to do that individually, we will organize a program to perform the iterations for us. So that's coming up. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.